Turn with me, if you would, to uh, Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, verses 8 down through verse 10. Nehemiah 8, 8 down through 10. And I'm going to read this for you, and then we're going to launch off into this thing. Okay. <clears throat> he says, and they read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give a sense so that they understood the reading. Then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest, and the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has prepared as nothing prepared, for the day is holy to the Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And certainly the people who lived 2,500 years ago when this was written are no, long, no different from the Jews of today who live in Jerusalem because 2,500 years ago there are those who lived around Jerusalem who did not want their presence in the city as today in the Jewish nation, there are those who don't want their presence in that area. And I dare say that today, as you live out your life, it can be difficult living your Christian faith in a world that doesn't appreciate your Christian faith. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You want to have strength? Find the joy of the Lord. So a good question would be, well, how do we, what does the joy, how do we get the joy of the Lord? If you and I were 20, living 2,500 years ago in the city of Jerusalem and we were to go around and we were to talk to people who were at the celebration of booths that year and we asked them, how do you get the joy of the Lord? What makes the joy of the Lord be your strength? We would get a lot of different answers. One answer would be that they would say 90 years ago, our forefathers who lived in Jerusalem were disobedient to God and and God's punishment came on their lives. And, and an enemy came down and rounded them up and took them back to, into captivity for 90 years. But, but God's grace is greater than his wrath. God's grace came through and, and God delivered us from that place of bondage to this place of freedom in the holy city. God's joy is our strength. Certainly joy because God's grace is good. If you ask somebody else, well, well, where's the joy come from? It comes from the Lord. He might say something like this. As they are there in the square facing the water gate, they, you would notice that there was a wall that connected to the water gate that went all the way around the city of Jerusalem. You would say, well, where does your joy come from? They might say something like this. Because God counted us worthy to participate in the work of the kingdom. God allowed us to build that wall in the midst of our enemies. We got together each man each man had his portion of the wall to build, and we worked shoulder to shoulder building up the wall to protect the city. The joy of the Lord comes from allowing us to be worthy to serve him in his kingdom. And I say today, for those of you who are busily working in the kingdom, working in your church, working in other areas where, God's, where God is glorified, you would have to say with the, those Israelites, God allows us to work, and from that we receive such joy and, and happiness. Sometimes for the simplest things. A few weeks ago, we had a work day at the church. And that meant that we went around, and they went around, and, and cleaned things up, and repaired things. And, and I was talking to one of the guys who was actively busy in working on that day. And I said, well, how's it going today? <clears throat> he said, man, this is great. I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Now, I don't enjoy doing that kind of stuff, but he was fired up. He was, he was serving his church, serving his Lord by cleaning up and fixing things at the church. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy can come from being used in his kingdom. I say to you, there are a lot of other things that can be done to give us joy. For one thing, we can volunteer to be a coach. That would give you joy if it was all over. You'd be glad you did. Some volunteer to teach classes. Some volunteer to do other things. That is, that creates the joy in us because we were counted worthy to serve the Lord in that capacity. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me ask somebody else. Where does the joy of the Lord come from? 
He said, I, I can tell you where it comes from. He said, we gathered together on that seventh month, that very first day of that month, and, and someone said, wouldn't it be great if we convinced Ezra, the priest, to read from the book of the law? So they asked Ezra, the priest, to read from the book of the law. And the scripture says that Ezra, this is the fifth verse, they, as he climbed to the podium and stood in front of the podium that had been made for him to speak on that day, as he opened the book of the law and began to read, it says that all the people stood up. Have you ever wondered where that idea of standing when the, word, when the word of God is read, where it came from? It came from right there. That fifth chapter, of, of eight, the eighth chapter, the eighth chapter, fifth verse of, of Nehemiah. When he began to read, they all began to stand. It says this, and all the people understood what was being said because people were set aside to interpret what the word said. There were those who said, this is what it means. And it also says in, in the third verse that the people were attentive to what was being read. They were attentive to the word of God. You know, as I read that this week, I thought it would be difficult for you and I today to be attentive to the words that are being read. It was, it was from the book of, law, of the law. The book of the law includes such books as Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So much of that, by our standard, would be boring to us to, to listen to, hard to listen to as they talk about the rules of the faith. But then I thought, you know, for those of you who were here on the Sunday night when Josh taught on the book of Leviticus, he broke it down for us, and this is what this means, and this is what this means, this is how it's divided up. You have a better understanding of why they were so impressed with, with the book of the law, what it meant to them. I think just the idea that the Word of God represents the Word of God. Those words written on that page represent God's Word to His people. On that day, as they listened to what Ezra read in the book, they were all humbled. It says that they began to, to mourn. They broke down and they cried. They put their faces to the ground and they cried. It's the Word of God coming to us by way of the priest. The joy of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The work of the Lord. The presence of the Lord in allowing us to come to this place. His grace creates inside of us a, a certain joy that then becomes our strength. Allows us to, to focus on and, and, to, and to deal with our environment that we're in. The joy of the Lord gives us the strength to Resist the temptations that come our way. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord causes us to celebrate. He says here that Ezra said to them, Go eat the fat and drink the sweet and give to him who is not prepared. Give to him so he can eat and he can drink. Let us celebrate today because this is a great day of celebration, the day of booths. Do this and and they did that, and everyone was satisfied. What a joyous day they, they had. The, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The foundation of their joy rested in what God was doing in their life. And I always say to this congregation, you ought to find joy in the fact that God is working through your church, and God is hopefully working through you. God extends his grace to us. He allows us to serve his kingdom. That becomes the foundation of the joy that we have, which then becomes the strength we need to live in a very ungodly world. And we find in Luke, the second chapter, 2,500 years later, we find that, that God does another miraculous thing which creates joy. We find in that second chapter that an angel of the Lord comes to some shepherds on a hillside. He has a message, and, and they understood what it was. The message is coming from, from God himself. He has something to say to us, and that message brought joy. Let me read verse, verse uh, 8 down through 10 again. He says, And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, 
I bring you good news of great joy. Of great joy which shall be to all people. I bring you good news of great joy. Now these shepherds out in the field, they weren't, they weren't theologians. They weren't people who understood everything about God. But they knew this. The angel's word represented the very word of God. Whenever the word of God comes to us, there is always joy. With a great announcement that unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, the Savior, one who come and saves. They understood that. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. And from that, it brought joy. As it should bring joy to all of us. Do you have joy today? As you got up today and you started your day and you looked at the weather outside, how gloomy it was outside, did you have joy? The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's great joy because the announcement to the shepherds that a Savior was born. There should be joy because of that. What did they do with that joy? They took that joy and they said, well, you know, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is born. Let's go and see God's great gift to us that brings us joy. And they go to see the Holy Child and, and they went away rejoicing, full of joy again. Verse 17 says that everywhere they went, they made known the saying that had come to them about the Christ child. Their joy overflowed to the world around them. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord gives us purpose. The joy of the Lord has a foundation steeped in the Word of God and the promises of God and the hope that God gives to us of eternal life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Day after day, we are met with challenges. I got some news a while ago just before I came in here that a person who used to be a member of our church was killed in a wreck yesterday. I thought of his family and the strength that they would need. And I thought, the joy of the Lord, the promises of the Lord is our strength. It needs to be your, their strength. We don't know what today is going to bring or tomorrow is going to bring, but I know this, his promises are true. And they are faithful, and they should give us great joy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence with us today, as it was 2,500 years ago, to those Israelites who had just completed that wall in the midst of such turmoil and such hatred around them. We thank you that on that day, your joy gave them strength. We thank you, Lord, that today your joy gives us strength. And certainly, we know of families today who are going through some awful difficult moments, who today need your strength and your joy. I pray, God, that you would bless them and bless us, that we would live lives that, that reflected the strength that we have in you. May people look at us and know that our faith gives us the power that we need to be successful in the world where we live. Now, Lord, bless us richly, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I challenge you today <clears throat> to go home. And to think about all the reasons why you should have joy in the Lord. What's he done for you? What's he done for you? What's he promised you that he's faithful to accomplish in your life? <clears throat> Go home. <clears throat> Lord, why should I have joy in my life? I'm telling you, he has given us so much. He has promised so much to us. He has blessed us in so many wonderful ways. And how can we help but have joy? Especially this time of the year. When we think about the coming of the Christ child. How can we help but have joy? One more time, Josh.